Hello everyone. My name is Alexander and I'm presenting on the project topic Sovereignty Models for Mass Settlements, Lessons from the ITU and UPUK Studies. I worked on this project with Ebrel under the supervision of Dr. Mizra. Now, before I start my presentation, I would like us to consider these questions. Why should we study existing earth-based governance models when we are planning for a future on Mars or any other sustainable planet? And what lessons can these models teach us about managing a society in an entirely new environment? Also, what, um, given that Earth and Mars are different environments, what values do Earth-based governance models bring to the development of a new governance framework on Mars? So with my presentation, I'll look at the primary sovereignty issues identified with the International Telecommunications Union, as well as the Universal Postal Unions, and how those sovereignty issues were adjudicated. Then we look at some of the lessons we can apply when we are looking at a new governance framework for mass settlement. Now, the, I, the ITU is the oldest international organization currently, and um, it was formed when a group of 10 European states um, decided to standardize telecommunication. Now, these are some of the primary sovereignty issues identified. There was the concern over the possibility of control by host nations, France, because it was immediately proposed that the headquarters of the ITU be, be in France, but um, it, that was ignored and generally accepted that the ITU be in a neutral state, which was Swiss, Switzerland. Also, there was tension between developed and developing countries regarding influence in decision making because the IPU has a principle of one country, one vote. And since the developing countries formed the majority in the IPU, they were using that to their advantage to the extent of requesting that part of the ITU development funds be used to support the developing the development initiatives of the developing countries. And this was opposed and rather a voluntary support fund was created to support the developing countries. So they had to come to an, an agreement. Also, there was an issue with creation of a balanced radio frequency allocations, especially immediately after the First World War and the Second World War, where victorious countries were taking over the radio frequencies of those that lost. So the ITU had to create um, a, a frequency allocation to ensure that no country interferes with the radio frequency of another country. And some frequencies were also allocated for um, marine services as well as aeronautical navigation services. Now, the UPU was also formed not long after the IPU, and that was uh, in an attempt to standardize mail delivery as well as postal services. So some of the primary sovereignty issues identified in this case study um, were, first of all, the terminal deal system, which was um, to provide discount for developing countries um, was seen as creating an unfair advantage to foreign mailers, especially to China. The terminal deal system was, uh, initiative was put in place in the 1960s. Developing countries were getting discounts on their services. They could lower their services and still be at an advantageous position. So the UPU solved this by allowing countries that uh, receive a lot of mails to set their own new system. Also, there, there was the unequal treaties which was imposed by the Western countries uh, on Japan, which forced Japan to open up to the West. And Japan joined the UPU because the UPU has a principle that uh, all member states um, are sovereign, hence Japan joined so that they could claim their sovereignty by being part of the UPU and also so that they could decide their own rates for postal services as well as other 
international uh, services they engage in. Now, what are some of the ideas for shared sovereignty on Mars? The first one is there will be the need to balance between regulation and flexibility to ensure responsiveness as well as innovation. Um, the IPU, for instance, was criticized for being a bit uh, slow in response. And this could not work well on Mars because the Martian environment is very harsh. Hence, there will be, need, there will be the need to be flexible and quick in some decision-making processes. Also, the idea of sharing resources equitably will be technically challenging because exploitation of resources on Mars will be expensive. And unless there is a great deal of cooperation among various stakeholders, it will be impossible to um, share resources equitably. Also, there is a need to adopt fair and common standards as, as the principles of ITU and UPU suggest. So standards such as resource extraction, um, resources like water and minerals, there should be standards that guide everyone, including only already established settlers as well as new settlers on the Martian environment. This is to ensure cooperation. Now, um, the feasibility of some of these ideas. So technically, it is feasible to uh, ensure uniform standardization for resource extraction, for instance, as well as usage, um, because um, because of the nature of the Martian environment, it will be it, it will be challenging if there are no um, measures to ensure that um, everyone or every settler on Mars uh, does the the right thing in the right way. But politically, implementation of shared sovereignty and uniform standards on Mars could face challenges because different stakeholders have um, sometimes have different and conflicting interest. And there need to be um, cooperation, else there will be political challenges in terms of um, following the same procedures as well as rules. To ensure a sustainable governance on mass, and the standards and agreements must be flexible to uh, match the evolving needs as well as technological advancements of the new environment. In conclusion, the ITU and UPU, being two of the oldest organizations, offer valuable lessons that we will apply for future mass settlements. So I will express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Misra, my research mentor, for his guidance and support throughout the project, as well as his valuable uh, feedback. Also, I would like to thank the, all the research scientists at Blue Marble Space Institute of Science for the knowledge they imparted during their talks, as well as the advice they offered. Thank you.